Awesome. So let's cross first of all to Sophie, who is in sunny Carlisle, I think. Is that where you are, Sophie? Yes, I am in sunny Carlisle today. Sunshine's in Carlisle. All right. Well, Amy will get your slides up when you're ready, Sophie. But as I said, you're doing great things at university and it's fantastic that you've come on to tell us what it's all about. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so just while we're getting the PowerPoint up, I just want to say thank you to Tom and everybody else involved in the Arts and Culture Network for allowing me to come on here today and kind of share with you uh, what myself and Molly are doing and explain a bit more about our new collective SOMO. So, there we are. Um, okay, so SOMO is essentially, I am Sophie, one half of SOMO and Molly is the other half who can't be with us today. But we are an art-based collective and we just completed our Bachelor of Fine Art degrees at the Uni of Cumbria uh, in June and we are set to graduate next month, which is very exciting. Um, so next slide, please, Amy. Thank you. Um, so as SOMO, we want to do our best to essentially create a supportive and inclusive space for artists. Uh, kind of regardless of backgrounds and disciplines uh, to come together and share ideas and um, have artwork that could blossom into more events, exhibitions and projects in this region. So kind of when we created SOMO, our aim was to assist individual artists and organisations to develop, curate and host exhibitions, shows and other art related events. Uh, we're based in Carlisle, Cumbria, uh, a city where there is an abundance of artists and already so many great opportunities. So we want to kind of strive to create those even more kind of opportunities for ourselves and our peers and host spaces that allow people to exhibit their works. Uh, I live near Appleby, so I am like an hour away from Carlisle usually. And I feel like kind of sometimes... The first, I actually live in Brough, but not many people ever know where it is. <laughs> um, and kind of, there's not as many opportunities there in those small villages as there are here. So it's kind of us coming together in Carlisle, but also aiming to kind of spread those opportunities and those ideas further. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so this slide shows kind of a montage of people and organisations that we've worked with uh, so far up to now. Um, it kind of all started throughout our second year of university when we began working closely at events and um, <clears throat> Daniel Ibbotson came into university to do a talk about um, how he needed two people to help him at Manchester Art Fair. So we kind of jumped on that opportunity because we'd never been to an event like that before. And we just thought it would be really kind of eye opening and inspiring, especially in our second year as we're starting to think about what we wanted to do uh, for our degree shows. So we went to Manchester Art Fair and we represented Daniel and Malcolm Wilson's uh, stand. And then kind of as we progressed through our studies, um, Daniel went to Glasgow Art Fair so we helped him there and um, we kind of continued to volunteer at various art events and venues. In May 2022 we assisted uh, Stuart Roy Clark who's the gentleman on the bottom left there. He's the founder of Homes of Football and um, one of his main kind of uh, roles that he does is he photographs a lot of football culture and he did an event at the old fire station uh, where Mick Wadsworth came in and did a Q&A. And it was um, also a charity event to raise money for Eden Valley Hospice. So me and Molly kind of took on organising that event. And maybe essentially you could say we did all of those behind the scenes things like we um, organised the raffle and, you know, the decor and the kind of schedule of the event and all of those kinds of things that were involved. And so throughout our degree, um, we were balancing full-time study and extra events through volunteering and um, jobs. So then um, we were really excited when Intro, um, the PR company in Carlisle approached us and asked us to curate the Historic Quarter Arts Festival in 2022. And this was off the backhand of us helping Daniel at Manchester he put our name forward and so it was just kind of really proved to us that the importance of 
creating those networks and communicating with people and taking every opportunity you can because if we hadn't helped <clears throat> sorry if we hadn't helped Daniel then intro wouldn't have approached us for that opportunity and so like I said before we do know that there are already so many opportunities in Carlisle and I think for example the historic quarter arts festival was a really important one for us in that it pushed uh, artists of all skill sets and all experiences, regardless of whether people were full-time artists or doing art as a hobby. And that was kind of from there onwards that Molly and I felt that we worked quite well together. Um, kind of that like good energy that comes from two people who like bounce off of each other in a way and really play to each other's strengths. And that was when we decided that after university had finished, we would really try and push this idea of working together as SOMO and it became something that we can kind of see ourselves doing. And I think we have on our side as well, being recent graduates and during our time as students, it was quite difficult to know where to look for an art opportunity. Um, and as well, not just the opportunities, but what is accessible for a student and affordable for a student or a graduate. And so it's kind of one of the things we want to do is bridge that gap between students, graduates and the working world. Because if you aren't sure where to look and you've just come out of uni and you're studying full time, it can seem quite daunting. And so that's one thing we're trying to do through through SOMO. Um, next slide, please. Um, so this is kind of another, just to give you a bit of more information about um, ourselves. Um, in our third year of university, um, when we were considering that SOMO could be something we try and develop after our studies, we also explored uh, collaboration through creating art. Um, so we were combining both of our projects to create new pieces. So just to give you a brief idea, my degree show project was based upon um, destruction in order to create. So I was really heavily influenced by a book called Destruction, a Whitechapel gallery book, and that discussed um, destruction as a creative process, so artists that destroy to create. So I thought, oh, maybe it would be funny for me to destroy the book instead. Um, so my project was all about destruction and then Molly's was all about um, language and text and how many times do you repeat a word before it loses its meaning? Um, so hers was about communication. So the piece on like the top right, um, the black and white piece, obviously from the front, it's not a legible word, but from the left, the piece says destruction because it's all, it's like raised um, like little triangles. So from the left, it says destruction. And then as you walk around on the other side, it says information. So that was kind of that idea. And then the bottom right, we painted a piece that said communication is key. And then we kind of sliced it up and um, rearranged it. Cause it was that whole idea of if something works the way it is like the book destruction, why destroy it? So it was kind of just like a conceptual kind of idea. And then, on the left, we were let loose with a little like propane um, thing and we just kind of had a bit of fun destroying canvases. So that was just kind of, um, but kind of the point of this slide is to just explain that we wanted to expand our ideas on what collaboration was. And it's not just as two people who are working together in like a professional sense, but also two people who, how do we communicate differently and what different conversations happen when we create art together instead. Um, so next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so we are currently artists in residence at the Uni of Cumbria, and we are using this opportunity to connect, hopefully connect with new people and organizations and build up our collective and establish our aims and our goals. Um, we also interact with students, which we find is like quite well a very important part of it because um, like on Monday next week, we're going into university to do a crit with the students. And I think from our perspective as well, um, 
even if we can't, even if we have a conversation about a student's work and they can openly talk critically about the work, even if we can't necessarily, you know, guide them the next steps, we know the value of just talking about where your project is and where you think it's going. So I was having a conversation when I was on campus yesterday with a student, he asked me to just like talk to him about his work. And I was just kind of asking him like, like, why did you do this? Or why, you know, that kind of thing. Why are these together? And that he came away feeling like he'd had quite a valuable talk because you can sometimes get so pinned in on your own ideas. I feel like everybody can relate to that. <laughs> um, that it's like helpful to kind of come away and just look at it from a different perspective. The one thing we kind of learned throughout uni is the importance of um, distancing yourself from your own work and your own projects. Because if you kind of get yourself too tied in, then you know if if you're talking about it critically or if someone comes along and is giving you advice, you want to take a positive spin on that rather than get yourself all kind of you know bothered about it. And um, so yeah, we just want to kind of give students the opportunity to talk about their work, and we can offer guidance, any artists' research, and kind of our own knowledge. Um, so this slide kind of shows a few pictures of things that we have done in the past and um, collaboration and community really are our core principles and we want to uplift our peers and contribute to this already positive creative community that exists in this area of Cumbria. Um, with us being the artist in residence we have a mentor who um, was mentioned before is Karen Jones so she kind of offers a lot of expertise and support on um, how we can get ourselves out there and communicate with people. And um, we're also so open to people reaching out to us with suggestions and ideas, because we know that we haven't just come straight out of uni and know everything. It, there is a lot more that we need to kind of, you know, develop and build on. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Oh. I'm not sure the email address isn't showing up on there, but I'll, uh, I'll just, tell you anywhere I'll put it in the chat and um, so yeah, we do have an email address and a social media which we keep up to date with what's uh, going on and um, we have a monthly newsletter that we recently uh, brought out and this gets distributed to the students of the Uni of Cumbria so obviously we studied fine art but we don't want to keep these opportunities just to fine art we want it to kind of be all creative disciplines within the university and um, so every month we do a newsletter with uh, open calls and we're trying to keep it to open calls that are below like maybe 20 30 pounds to submit because obviously we want to keep it affordable for students and all of those kinds of things and we've also recently added a uh, what's on section um, which allows local companies and organisations to reach out to us to tell us of anything that's happening. And we pop it in the newsletter and this gets distributed to all um, Uni of Cumbria students. Uh, we also post it on our social media. But I just think we kind of need to, we're really trying to affiliate the university and the students with kind of these art opportunities a bit more so that you know, even if they're looking at what's on, they kind of know what to expect. Because I know when I was in university and I did my first exhibition, I didn't know. I was like, how am I going to get my artwork there? What do I do? How do I hang it? How do I frame it? All of those questions, which probably very beneficial to learn whilst you're in university so that it prepares you for afterwards when you kind of more eager to look for these opportunities. And so, yeah, if you have anything coming up or anything you'd like to share, we're more than happy to feature these in our newsletter. For example, we had um, the Carlisle Creative reach out to us for their Christmas uh, pop-up at intro next month. And uh, they asked us to um, put it in the newsletter and Flutter and Fern, who've just opened their new shop in town, asked us. And um, so we've been popping those in the newsletter for people to see. And um, yeah, I'm just really thankful for the opportunity to talk to you today. And I hope that's given you kind of a background and more information to what we're all about. And we look forward to connecting with everybody.
Sophie, that's great. Thank you. Is your what's your so I'm just gonna ask some basic questions. If anyone else wants to chip in with a question or a comment, then feel free. What's your motivation for doing this, Sophie? You and Molly, what why are you doing this? Um for me personally, it goes um quite far back to when I, I went to university in 2018 and I moved away and um I went to study film and TV and I got there thinking I was going to be there forever and you know my life once I finished uni I'd get a film job and everything would be fine and then I was there for a month and I just didn't feel right and I was like this isn't the right time it's not the right course it's not for me and so as you can imagine it was really hard to accept that and come away from it especially when you live rurally and everybody knows everything about you <laughs> so I came back to my village and moved back home and I just got like how's uni how's uni and it was really hard for me to kind of you know eventually move on from that so I think it's just I realized during uh, COVID specifically that I wanted to do art because I started painting again and I did this one painting and um, it was like a turning point in me realising that that was what I wanted to study. And I think because I left university the first time, now it's like I want to be able to provide people with that advice that it's okay to, like, take your time and to kind of, like, with us providing open calls, it's like, here's the information, you know, if you want to look into it, you can look into it and kind of artists can reach out on their own and in their own time rather than that pressure of kind of you have to do these things, if you know what I mean. I think that for me was kind of a real eye opener into that idea of do what you want to do. And then we're kind of providing people with those networks because we realised throughout uni that and we only had one module that was called um, professional self, where we had artists come in and it was the middle of our second year where everybody kind of went into a little bit of a panic because um, we were having these professional people come in, which was really, really useful like and beneficial. But that was the point where we all started thinking about our futures and it was kind of scary, but like inspiring at the same time. And um, so it's kind of, we want to provide people with those opportunities and that knowledge as early as we can in their Okay. degrees so that they don't come out feeling like lost and overwhelmed because that was one thing for me so you've, you've obviously got a sort of philanthropic um <laughs> yeah. bit in your brain as well to help community and to help others as well yeah um, I mean there's an obvious question which is how how do you monetize this do you monetize it you know is is because this is all work isn't it and ultimately you know do you want to get paid for doing this kind of stuff but at the moment uh, where are you at as far as that's concerned at the moment um, so at the moment, we're obviously just kind of building things up and we know that we can't expect to just jump into things and get paid for them. Um, but there's things like the Historic Quarter Arts Festival who have asked us next year to cu curate again, and that is like a paid um, role. Right. Um, but we're hoping that we can... Um, we're hoping to work with Karen Jones on this kind of Arts at 60 um, idea, which is like celebrating the 60 years of... Um, art camp uh, art course at and um, yeah so she's doing yeah. some talks at the moment as well uh, about that but we're really hoping we can try and use the year at the residency to um, develop our ability to do like a funding applications because obviously that's something we're not taught um, yeah. really throughout uni so that's something we're trying to develop and um, more of kind of a freelance um idea perspective but yeah. at the moment it's um we're both working like other jobs while we try and build up yeah I, I there's, there's an awful lot of work going on and yeah. just, i'm just sort of trying to be pragmatic really sometimes there's a tipping point isn't there whereby um you 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 know this stuff takes time and ultimately we yeah. kind of got to put food on the table etc etc you've got to work, work out a way of sort of building that relationship you know to, to work for you kate's got a hand up kate off you go Morning, Sophie. Um, uh, we've not met. I'm the chair of CACN. Um, I also work in museums across the county. Uh, that's my day job. Um, it sounds fantastic. And it's so impressive that you've got yourselves together 
to to do this and I can absolutely see the sense of what you're trying to do I'm sure everybody here can actually um it makes total sense that this kind of bridge between your experience as a student and the working world which is difficult in any sector but especially so in in fine art um so I just wanted to say that you're really welcome to CACN and if there's anything we can do to help you, we will. But I would, you know, in particular, make sure that you're receiving the newsletter. Um, and you know, because in there is all sorts of opportunities that you might be able to share through your own newsletter and also engage in yourselves and and um for example, fundraising training and you know, co-creation training that's coming up and artistic response to um, environmental challenges all of those things that which are which are you know very very low cost deliberately and even potentially subsidizable for any students who wanted to attend so I think um, really let's make sure that the things that are out there organized by us at CACN are really available to you and that you are able to share them with your um, with your um, you know students at university yeah Thank but you. congratulations and um yeah really anything that we can do because we consider it one of our sort of core purposes is to leave the door open or open the door and leave the door open for young and emerging artists of all kinds so um but it's not always easy for us to find the young people and the students so this is a really good opportunity for us too Thanks, Thanks, Kate. Amy, come to you in a second. Um, so Sophie, Stefan just asks in chat, are you collaborating with Prism Arts, who are obviously Carlisle based? Oh, so um, we're not at the moment. Uh, last year, we collaborated with them on their symposium event. I think it was called Step Up and Step yeah. Forward. That was on the um, campus. But we recently, since we've been in the intro newsletter, um, we've received like um, a lot more, um, we've gained a lot of followers on social media and we had a comment from um, Prism saying that they would be, you know, they're always on the lookout for people to work with and that kind of thing. So it's definitely something that we're right. thinking about. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Amy. Thank you. Hi Sophie. Yeah, it was just to echo a bit what Kate was saying um, and just to point you towards the opportunities page uh, on the CACN website and the opportunities are in the newsletter every week. Um, it's basically, sometimes it's artist commissions opportunities, sometimes it's job opportunities and I just would definitely would point that towards the students as well because it's a big dilemma isn't it when you've, uh, whether you've moved here or you're from here and you've done a creative degree, you then I, as you say, it's a bit scary being put out into the world and you need to make money. You've got to pay bills. Everyone has to do that. Um, but there's an awful lot of job opportunities there. So if somebody who was, had done an art degree and was creative and wanted to work in that field, so there's lots of part time opportunities as well so that you can still, you know, create your own artwork, enter into all the open calls. Um, but yeah, so it was just a point towards that page, really. That's fab. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Kate, did you want to come in again? Yes, one other thing. Can, can I introduce you to Janet Presswell, who's on the screen? Um, Sophie, Janet, Janet, Sophie. Um, Janet runs the Helping Hands Project, which is a project across cultural organisations in Cumbria. Um, Janet, let me, let me allow you <laughs> to explain what you do and what the opportunities are perhaps for Sophie. Yeah, I did, did um, directly message Sophie in the chat just to, to say I was looking forward to the presentation and it didn't disappoint. Um, uh, really nice to meet you. Helping Hands, uh, we look to um, engage, encourage, support people to volunteer in, in arts and culture and heritage organisations. And as Kate said, it's a Cumbria-wide project. So we've got 35 cultural partners with us at the moment, uh, ranging from Tully and Carlisle, we work with Prism Arts, we work with English Heritage, National Trust, so there's, there's quite a wide range um, of opportunities. We also work with some of the smaller organisations as well, like Greencroft Arts up at Gilsland. Uh, so I really love the opportunity to come and talk to you and tell a little bit more about what we do because I think there's there's a, a very definite link in how we can try and bridge that gap into the, the world of work for students. 
Absolutely. That sounds thank lovely. You. Yeah. Thank you, Janet. And uh, again, you know, just just knowing who to talk to, networking and contacting can can let things happen, allow things to happen. So, um, but it's great, so, Sophie. You know, thank you for for your time this morning. And, um, you know, as just to Kate said, we often struggle with network, which has been going for a number of years now. How do we how do we how do we collaborate, access, make connections with young people, not just for their for their benefit, but frankly for Cumbria's benefit? How do we stop young people, you know, going to school in Cumbria and then going away? You know, how do we keep them in the county? So all those sorts of connections, I think we're keen to to enhance. So let's keep talking and um, hopefully, you know, some great things will happen as a result of that in the future. Um, but thank you and well done to you and Molly for doing thank what you're you. doing. And I uh, hope to see you again soon and, you know, come on these calls, whatever, pick up the newsletter and uh, we can we can do business together. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for listening and for all the questions. And I'm going to have a look through the messages now. All right, and stick, and stick around because we're we're going to come to Hannah shortly um, to talk about this project that's kicking off in Millen. But first of all, I just wanted to share this film with you that I mentioned at the start of the call. So I'm going to play it from um, Twitter. It's from from the BBC Ideas uh, Twitter account, but it's not they don't just do Twitter; they do all sorts of things. BBC Ideas has been going for a number of years. They make short films about interesting stuff. They're usually about five minutes long. And this particular one I'm going to share with you now, I thought was particularly relevant to what Hannah is going to talk to you about shortly. So I'm just going to share my screen, press the right buttons in the right order, sit back and enjoy this. You might think about kindness as being this quite soft, fluffy, wishy-washy thing but actually is really fundamental to how we connect with each other. I think being kind is part of the purpose of being alive. Acts of kindness are needed in the world right now more than ever. Back in 2011, I was sitting in a cafe just enjoying a breakfast and I looked up at the screen and there was a double-decker bus on fire in London. It was terrifying, it looked like civil war. And it was a very negative response to the riots that really upset me as well. I felt increasingly despairing about what felt like the enormity of the problems of the world. I didn't know what I could do. He was overwhelmed with gratitude. It was disproportionate to my tiny amount of time and money. But I thought, I did kind of put a smile on his face. That sort of did make a difference. So as I was going home, I concocted this foolhardy notion that I was going to try and do an act of kindness every single day for a stranger for a year. It was completely life transforming. It's one of the big paradoxes of kindness that an act of kindness that is intended to benefit others actually has some positive consequences for yourself. There are patterns of activation in the brain which correspond to a boost to well-being. The reward pathways in the brain are activated when people are performing kind acts. Those relationships that are required for working cooperatively are founded upon basic social connections. So it's pretty fundamental to how human beings interact with each other. Thank you so much, that's really kind of you. Uh, oh yes, so over the course of the year it proved itself to be utterly heartwarming completely terrifying, occasionally expensive, sometimes physically hazardous, like when I carried some really heavy shopping over four miles to a lady's flat. So it was a really sort of creative journey that was also tiring and incredibly inspiring. I was like high every day. 
right? Mostly it was kind of a warm glow around your heart and also your tummy. So it just felt really good. Human beings have a predisposition to exhibit kindness to other people, but they also have the possibility of demonstrating quite significant unkindness to other people. The environment makes a huge difference. All of those stories about kindness being weak, we have to challenge those now. When you think of a really successful person, do you think of someone who's kind, or do you think of someone who's out there in the limelight, really dominant figure, a celebrity who's very wealthy? What can we do to turn the narrative of success around? So we said actually being successful does involve positive relationships with other people. This is one of my favourites, some old people dancing. I just thought about how elderly people had no contact beyond the walls of their care homes. What started off as quite a small localised idea just became something way bigger than I could have ever imagined. It's reached over 250 schools and over 250 care homes and positively impacted thousands of people. What we witnessed during that time was how much we earn to help each other. What we have to do now is remember the immense kindness that we were capable of during those times. This can't simply be a matter of instructing people in a given setting to be kind. Hey you, you need to be kind. We need to change our environment so that it feels normative to be kind. I would really like to see businesses, schools, hospitals, all public services have a kindness manifesto so that they all ask themselves, is this kind? So that it becomes an ordinary part of our conversation at every level, in every organisation, everywhere. The biggest lesson for me was to embrace the fact that every single day I can do something. That thing might be just saying good morning to someone, that thing might be just smiling. That's how we change the world. If you carry out a good deed to someone else, that will increase their chance of them carrying out kind of deeds to other people. So it kind of goes in a circle, kindness. The small stuff may actually be the big stuff. All those small things that you think, oh well, they're not important, it's just people being nice to each other. Maybe that's the most important thing for creating an environment which actually enables people to feel good and to be able to work together and to be able to take on some really big challenges. In the same way that a beach is filled with a billion grains of sand. There's a sort of beautiful humility in saying, I can, at every single moment, at any point of any day, contribute to making the world a better place. Thank you for indulging me and sharing that with you. I watched that and found it to be a lovely little film and it made me think about things a bit differently. So, uh, on that bombshell, maybe the little things are actually the big things. I'm going to hand over to Hannah, who is running a project called, thank you, Jesse, called All Kinds in Millen. Hannah, the floor is yours. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so, um, gosh, yeah, that was a that was a really good video. Um, and it sort of sums up um, the kind of thinking behind this project, I guess. Um, so could we do a screen share, Tom? Thank you. So this is all kinds. And as you can see, Milham is the capital of kindness and we are here to prove it. Um, so what we're saying here is not that um, we're going to turn Milham into a kind place. We're saying Milham already is a kind place. And um, what we're using this project for is to kind of um, amplify all of the good stuff that already already goes on. So do you think you could, could you scroll down a little bit? So this is our map of kindness. As you can see, there are different icons. Um, so you can report acts of kindness. So if you just hover your mouse over one of those little hearts, um, no, that's a, that's a business, a little heart. 
Do you see the little red, the little red heart? Um, so you can click that, and it brings up um, a act of kindness that someone's reported on. So it says, one of the lovely shopkeepers took time out of their busy day. It made me feel so welcome chatting to me, and it made me feel comfortable and seen. So you, so anyone can add to this map and report on kind acts that they have witnessed, experienced, or even done in in this area. Um, so that's that's the sort of the um, kind of one aspect of the project. And then another aspect is all about um, encouraging creativity um, and on a sort of um, grassroots level. Um, so what we're doing is we are offering free pebble painting workshops uh, to any um, local community group that already exists because there are a lot of groups um there are a lot of services but they're all um really quite badly underfunded um and they don't really have the resources to provide um kind of activities and support um so oftentimes you find that people who live around Millham and sort of southwest Cumbria in general they have to they have to drive up to Egremont, Whitehaven or even Carlisle in order to sort of take part in any kind of activities um so we want to bring um, creative, family, um, pensioner-friendly activities right there. Um, so you can see there are a few workshops booked in. So we had one yesterday. Uh, that was a drop-in for half term at the Millham Heritage and Arts Centre. And we had 45 people come in over the course of three hours, which is amazing. It's an amazing turnout. Um, and we ran out of pebbles, which is also amazing. And then... The next one is at Dublin Muse, um, and that is a um, it's a support group for uh, people that work with the NHS. And then Good Enough Start is a babies and toddler group and, you know, parent support group. So it can really appeal to anyone of any demographic, because um, I think that there is something really therapeutic about painting pebbles. And also we're on the beach, with these beautiful sort of flat pebbles, although we haven't taken them from the beach, we've ordered them online because it's illegal to take pebbles from the beach um and so but it kind of connects people to their surroundings and then the sort of third aspect of um of our project is called all kinds of businesses and this is um in in my head the part of the project that i'm actually most excited about because um what we are trying to do is we're trying to um bring community elements to um like spaces that are purely business focused so if um any business owners sign up to um to this program essentially um we'll give them um one to one mentoring and help um and resources to develop a sort of community uh, slant in what they're providing so for example um we've got salt fish and chips signed up um, they're in C scale and we are going to be um, we're going to be running a sort of uh, regular music showcase and open mic um, in their premises, um, which is something that they might not have had the time or resources to start on their own. But with, you know, with with, with our support, um, they'll be able to get it up and running. And um, some other sort of things that we can do is, is sort of we can paint a wall with a community mural in someone's shop. We could set up a reading corner um, in a hairdresser, you know, that sort of thing where I think in times like this, when sort of our community spaces, like our libraries, um, they're sort of they're under threat and um, they're underfunded and there's sort of no space for people to just kind of sit and connect um that isn't sort of forcing them to spend money i think it's really really important that all of us come together to uh, create these spaces for ourselves so um if tom if you want to sort of ask a few questions then yes so why millum why millum because is, is millum in need um, I'd say I'd say Millam is one of the most underserved um, parts of Cumbria in terms of arts funding, and when it does get art projects kind of brought to it, they're sort of um, 
they're kind of done without much like input from the local people and there is this kind of assumption that people in Milham don't really care but they really do um, and you know there's been a lot of decisions made for Milham um, which haven't involved people that actually live there and so I want to do this um, for my community essentially um, bring the funding into the community actually use it for the community rather than just doing something that people won't relate to it's about you know improving my area really it's a bit selfish I guess <laughs> not at all and how will you know you know whether you've had any success or any impact I think um it's impact is one of those things that is so difficult to measure because um is it about how many numbers you get? Is it about, you know, how many people in a certain postcode attend? Or is it about how many people attend again and again? Um, I think it's it's one of those things that you can't actually quantify impact. It's, it's something that you sense growing over time. For me, a big sign that what we are doing is working is that I see people putting on things of their own without any input from me. Um, what I want is a is a society, a community where everyone has a project that they feel like they have a confidence to bring into action and realize. And I don't want it to be connected to me. I want them to. I want everybody to do their own thing uh, independently. Yeah. Great. Um, and as as Amy says, there, great idea to get businesses involved, changing that idea of what success actually is. Um, and if you become an enabler and an empower, which I think is what you're saying, Hannah, that's a huge that's a huge success. You know, it's like the Albanian sort of economic pyramid. I always think of just, you know, get other people to influence other people. Um, yeah, that's, that's that's the that's the holy grail, isn't it, really? Yeah, I'm quite I'm quite inspired by Maslow's hierarchy of needs as well. And I think I'm a firm believer that um, you're not going to get any creativity or self-actualization out of people whose fundamental basic needs are not met. Um, and it's, um, I think it's, it's, it's really important that what we provide, it doesn't, I mean, because at the end of the day, we are an arts organization and we can't provide people with housing and we can't provide them necessarily with like, you know, regular food or shelter. But, but what we can do is we can provide them with connection a listening ear we can hold space for each other and I think when you start sort of small simple tasks just being nice to each other just listening letting people talk I think you'll find that over time their ambition will increase um because they'll once you've given people that sort of grounding of like not necessarily therapy but like you know when someone feels held and heard I think their self-esteem increases and when their self-esteem increases they're more likely to push the boat out try new things be a little bit more daring and that's what I really really want to see happen in my area I want to see people I want to see like events popping up all over you know Facebook uh, saying I'm going to be doing a you know one-off one-man show uh, stand-up comedy routine I've never done it before but I'm going to give it a try or I want to see people saying like let's let's decorate all the lampposts I want to see, um, you know, art galleries pop up in blooming, you know, banks. You know, I want to see, it's like guerrilla radical creativity um, done by the people, not by the government. Excellent. Um, great stuff, Hannah. Jonathan's just put some thoughts in there um, and Jesse there as well in chat. So do have a look at those. And I'm a massive fan of the Norman Nicholson Society. I, th I know I think I mentioned this to you before, yeah. which are, who are in the process of buying his old house where he lived. Um, a guy called Charlie Lambert is, is, is spearheading that. Um, and I think they, they could be a really important part of the artistic infrastructure of, of Millen and beyond. I know Kathleen knows all about this as well. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I hope you're connected to all the important people in Millen. I'm sure you probably are, or if not, you you are get on that journey. Um, but I can also see you as being a fulcrum of lots of lots of great stuff taking place as well. So has anybody else got anything they just want to mention to um to Hannah while she while we've got her? There's a few bits in chat there, Hannah, for you to pick up. But you know, I think um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just having a little yes. read. Stefan, um... off you go. Stefan. 
Oh, hi. Um, and I, th I think you mentioned something really challenging for all of us, particularly when um, funds have been raised to to deliver work like this. Is what you mentioned about the evaluation and quantifying, and when Tom asked you the question about impact, um, it's relevant for CACN as well. <laughs> How do you capture the effect of what you put so much time and effort and and money into? Um, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm I'm I'm, I'm just um, <laughs> I'm just airing. Uh, um, a, a sympathy with you and a, a support for you and uh, recognising it's what CACN faces all the time as well. I think we, we're on a bit of a mission to encourage people to let us know when there's been some positive outcome to all the networking that uh, we um, facilitate. And I wonder if there's anything that you're doing, you can, how do you do it? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, it, I think it's one of the hardest things because um, I feel like the sort of traditional methods of, um, collecting impact and insights um and like evaluating attendance data they can actually sort of ruin the experience for participants because like you know they've just done this wonderful workshop and then suddenly go right can you fill in this survey please and they sort of it's like it kind of almost breaks the um it breaks the kind of moment and they sort of go like oh are we just numbers so i think part of like my like you know long-term five-year plan so to speak is to try and reinvent the way that we evaluate data and um, the impact and the insights on participants, and, and I know this is this isn't something that I can even come up with overnight. And um, I mean, it's it, I think it's something that actually would benefit from further discussion, like among you know all of us, everyone who kind of is a kind of facilitator and works in like participatory art i think it's something we need to we need to rethink and uh recalibrate because there's so many different types of engagement as well and they all form strands of like a bigger picture because you get the one-off participations you get people who come to a thing every single week and you can sense them growing as a person and um you know how do we value the you know the impact that you have on someone's soul um it's it i think it, it, it we need a more qualitative qualitative um method of capturing audience data i i agree hannah and there's maybe probably a call if not a meeting all about evaluation how do we do it what's the best way of doing it what's the most impactful way of doing it bearing in mind that sometimes you evaluate for a reason which is to show your funders that you've done x y and z as you said you would yeah. but it's, it's a really interesting concept to look at how do we measure success of these things i'm conscious of time hannah there's mm -hmm. some lovely comments in chat for you and um, peter that project you've took putting about a million letters looks fascinating i'm going to look at that um after i've uh, uh finished this call as well it looks really really interesting hannah thank you good luck keep us informed of how it's going please because again yeah. You know, that part of Cumbria, I think, you know, I'm not sure we've done lots of stuff there in Millen, really. So it'd be great to keep and be kept informed about how the project is progressing. No doubt there'll be bumps in the road as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> if anyone can, I suspect you can. So thank you very much for sharing that with us this morning. Thank and, you. And good luck with it. I'm just conscious of time. So just before we finish, um, Amy is just going to share with you a couple of things coming up that we just want to tell you about and remind you of. So, Amy, over to you. Yeah, it was just to remind everyone we've got a programme of events going on at the moment. So we've got some workshops, uh, some sectoral meetups. Uh, so the next workshop we've got coming up uh, looks like a great one uh, led by Harriet and Rob Fraser uh, of Arts Collective Somewhere Nowhere uh, about creative responses to environmental challenges. Uh, that one's on. Uh, there's a ticket cost to that one, uh, two different options. And if ticket costs be a problem, just let us know. Uh, we've There's also, quite a few people booked on that already, aren't there, Amy, I think? Yeah, I think, yeah, get your tickets now, actually, because even though that's at the end of no November, um, yeah, we've probably got about eight or so tickets left for that one. Um, the sectoral meetups, which Chris Bridgman has been organising, are continuing. Uh, so the next one is the music one, uh, 23rd of November, and then after that, theatre and spoken word one. Uh, those are led by facilitators within uh, that creative field uh, which is excellent they are free they're on zoom i think uh, stefan asquik might be involved in one of those Stefan is involved in the theater one they're also at evening time slots so we know not everybody can make you know these friday morning zoom so it's it's uh, evening time slots that work uh, better for a lot of people um and then we do have a workshop 
on co-creation, which was the theme of our recent quarterly meeting uh, coming up at the end of November. As soon as we know the venue, uh, which Chris is busily organising at the moment, we'll let people know. Uh, but just keep an eye on the events page on the CSN website, obviously on the newsletter, social media, um, they're everywhere. And if it's something that you think someone that you know might like to book on, just keep sharing them and, and keep letting everybody know about them. Thanks, Amy. That's lovely. I'm just looking back at some smells. Sorry, I'm just looking at what people enjoy as far as smells are concerned. Viburnum blossom uh, is a beautiful thing. I like Hannah's as well. My dad finds walking into a bookshop gives him a laxative effect. It's bizarre. Uh, there, there hangs a tale, no doubt, about that as well. Bracken, very nice, freshly baked biscuits. Um, so some lovely smells just to leave you with as you enter your Friday properly now. Uh, thank you very much to Sophie um, for telling us about SOMO creation. Thank you very much to Hannah for telling us about all kinds. Um, great to see you all on this morning. Um, do keep in touch. We'll be back again next Friday. Can't remember what we're doing next Friday, but it'll be something interesting. Um, and in the meantime, I hope this has been an interesting and useful hour for you all. It's been great to see you. George, you popped up late, but you popped up. That's the most important thing. Nice to see you too. Um, have a good week. See you again soon. Bye, everybody.